right, this is Comcast, the MechWarrior Online special, The Great Refusal. Oh. And today we've got Laser Angel. Laser Angel once more, now in December. Kalis. This is Kalis. Passaggio Rain. Hey, this is me, again. Alex Wolf. Pleasure as always. Okay, Alpha One. Um, hello everyone. Boojum. I'm Boojum. Cocaine Samurai. Hey guys. Darjeeling. Hi. Deathlike. I'm here for Fazago. Dudebot. Howdy. Fugu. Hello. Greg. Yo. Iggy. Be sure to inquire about my $500 gold version. Yugiri. <laughs> hey. Mouse. For the love of God, end it now. Mouse GMR. Sup, folks? Molasses Fats. It's too damn cold. Noblesse. It's noblesse, man. How many times? Not! Stop! Not Protection. anymore! Told you so. Sinister Dinister, also known as Rather Dashing. Connor, I swear you've never been able to pronounce Visago's name right. <laughs> no. Not Rise. I think we officially have too many people for one podcast. <laughs> and Mint Frog from World of Lotax. Good and getting better, right, guys? All right. What? So it's December fifteenth, and uh, today's subject is the retraction of WOL and the Mechromancer. It was down due to hosting and technical issues. Not that the goons are playing this game. The rooms are listed on Mumble, but they're empty. So, when was the last time you actually played Mint Frog? Uh, it's been about early November. So... I don't think I played since October. I, I know when you last played. You played on October the 29th. That was a long time ago. How about you, Alex? Are you still playing? I took about a month's break, mostly due to not wanting to play anymore. I came back recently for four games. One of those games, SRMs, kind of worked, and I had minimally viable fun. And Kiyogiri? I haven't really played for the last few weeks at all. Last I... time I dropped, it was horrible. Uh, I've seen many people saying interesting things, like in almost every match there were calls of no clans before community warfare, spoken in all chat. Red and blue bonding over the common enemy, or common issue. One person said, <laughs> he loves my Flying Circus blog. Thank you. Excellent. <sighs> Awkward silence. Right. Um, yeah, okay. Did, we're getting so, hit. What are you doing, Connor? Let me, uh... I think the last time I played was back... It was right when the, the Shadowhawk came out, because I was too poor to afford it, and I only have Centurions, basically, and I kept getting blown up by a whole bunch of Shadowhawks, and I was like, nah, nah, I'm done. <laughs> um, if I could speak real quick, I uh, actually did, very recently, me and the EQRG managed to grab enough people to do a 12-man last week. No, two weeks ago. And we went... Our first match, we went against Black Widow Company. And we actually managed to beat them somehow. And then we won the second one only because we managed to jinx them with a cap. And then we lost every other single game because everyone kept already spamming and AC20 spamming. So, yeah, the 12v12 meta, it's, it's something special. It's definitely more organized, but only more organized in that everybody spams the same thing. You sound surprised. Well, I, I think I know who the people are who, that are gonna buy those $500 gold max. I think I know who those people are. <laughs> what? I don't think are it's like a company. Now let's move on to that. Operation Revival. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, God. Here we go. <laughs> Operation Revival. <laughs> <laughs> So why do you, Greg? 
Why do you think it was so soon? I mean, it happened. We haven't even gotten all of our Phoenix packages off of the shelf yet. What do you think? That's great. Protection. Well, I mean, I'm parroting Kong here, but we all know that this is, like, clearly a sign of desperation. I mean, your last grab deal just ended. Not even, like, two weeks later, the new grab deal's out. They're struggling for cash, and they're hoping to get one more fat whale to keep a dwindling player base to keep them afloat. All right, Iggy. See, I don't think it's so much about the money. I think that they realize that people are waking up, and it's like, oh, crap. We've got to ride this as best we can and dive. So, I mean, it's a final grab, is all it is. Darjeeling. It is never too early to ask for more money. And if there's one thing that people want from Mech Warrior, it's clan mechs. It's these clans. And so, it'll turn even the most battle-hardened and scarred veteran back. And they'll be like, hmm, well, maybe, because, you know, the Mad Cat and I really want to... Call it... <laughs> we call it beat and wife syndrome. Yeah. Alps. <laughs> I told PGI that if they wanted to get sales done, they could just sell a solid golden max. I never thought they'd go through with it, though. I did. <laughs> Everyone did. Alpha 1. Oh, boy. How much could I say about this? Um, to keep things short, though, it th I honestly had expected this to happen and to some degree. I knew that they were going to do clan max at some point, but this is just... Two hundred and ten dollars for a Mad Cat. Two hundred forty for a Masakari. For fuck's sake, sixty dollars for a Nova Hawk. Who's gonna pay this much money just to get smacked by Ghost Heat? <laughs> yeah, I never got that. Why the hell do they have the Warhawk so fucking high up, especially when you can't for PPC? Which one's that? The Masakari? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mouse GMR. Seriously, fuck these guys. I mean. Oh my god, this whole fucking situation is ridiculous. I run probably one of the few, or at least what was, dedicated clan units. We've bailed. We've already fucking bailed, and thank god that we did, because if I had to try and convince my guys to spend between $900 and $1,500 to get enough clan mechs to be able to do a 750-ton drop by the middle of next year, I'm pretty much doing a disservice to everybody that I know. So, yeah, we've... We Basically, just to sum up pretty much everything for today, PGI has killed MechWarrior and Battletech for my entire community, and we're fucking off elsewhere, because seriously, fuck this game so hard. Words straight from a Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. There can only be none. Nobles? It, it's obvious that they want to have more people in the game, and that's what everyone was playing this for. They wanted the clan invasion, they wanted it to be good. But they've got nothing to back up the clan invasion. They're just going to put the mechs out like it is right now. They're not going to have community warfare by June, guaranteed. It's over. They just need money, but they're probably not going to get it. What you got well, for me, Well, the thing Bass? is, Noblesse, hang on. Thing is... Alright. They reset the clock to 3048, not like and two months ago. And then they changed back. Yeah, yeah they reset back. the clock. We all still have those things in our cockpits, you know, the rotating 3050. So <laughs> now we're all time travelers. But no, no, we're going to start jumping another year into the future. No, we're going to be jumping another back. three, back. three yeah. years into the future, and now we're already having the clan invasion. No, you don't understand. Our, time our mech hangers, obviously a TARDIS. The thing is, Brian said that it was an experiment when they, sh they accidentally typoed it to. Uh, 40, 48, and then they changed it back to how it was, and they pretended that nothing had happened. No, oh, right. they strange. said that they were experimenting with that. It was what? their position yes. at the time. Position I can, at the time! Experiment I compare it to Mark Antony and Caesar when he kept putting a crown on Caesar's head and the crowd would boo, then Caesar would take <laughs> it off and then they'd cheer. Yeah, enough <laughs> about the fucking the clock. That's not what we're here for. Fuck the clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the community response to this. Oh. It's beautiful. I mean, I've been fighting this foreign war here and everything for over two years, basically. Finally, I get to see, I get to see everything burn. Justifiably so. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mech Warrior I told you Buddha? Moment. Uh, yeah, pretty much all of everything that's been set up until this point. I'm unfortunately legendary founder. Unfortunately, but, um, got suckered for the um, Phoenix pack as well. Uh, 
Yeah, pretty much everything everybody said up until this point, for the most part, is everything that I've been feeling. The Bryas? Something I noticed on the point of them being desperate. If you look closely at the clan's webpage that they've put up, there is only one piece of artwork for every one of those mechs. It's resized and it's mirrored for the different locations on the page, but there's only you're, one piece of art you're for each fucking one. Right. And the I gold skins think are literally that same exact artwork with a golden filter over top. They couldn't even draw oh custom <laughs> coloring for it. You it's heard literally it here, just folks. a filter. We're live, and it just got worse. There was no effort put into this. And just a couple weeks ago, they said that they had no plans for how clans would be implemented. So all the news that they gave us about details for how they'll be changed have been made up in the past 11 days. All right, Fugu? I believe they're bringing those clan mechs out right now because they have nothing else to sell, really. I mean, the colors and else can you buy. Really nothing to spend money on. And... All the players that are playing right now already have all those they want to have, so they figured, well, let's get back those people that were waiting for the clans. All right, Franchi? I just, I can't get over the fact that we all joked about gold clan mechs, but we didn't literally mean gold clan mechs. We just meant <laughs> clan mechs Boiler, that had to pay real I money did. for. And no, no, we were joking about that. It was a joke. You and can't they went make and jokes, did it. man. You can't I, make I know, jokes. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, gold-plated clan mechs that are really gold-plated. I just, I cannot get over that. All right, Mint Frog. Well, it's fairly obvious that it's a financial move, but above that, what's really frustrating for me and for a lot of the goons that I'm speaking for today is that it really wastes this huge opportunity for Battletech. Say, MMW survives till next June, which is kind of a guess, but say it survives, you could have run a week, two weeks worth of events where clan mechs were seeded into matches run by PGI guys or secret squirrels, and they could have really done a really high quality job for the invasion and gotten old players back and would have been actually an exciting event. Except now they're going to squander it all to try to get for the quick money now, get some extra Christmas sales. It's just fucking insulting. Like fake newscasts with you know, lost contact with the Oberon Confederation. Exactly. Mysterious invaders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alex, you want to finish this off? I'm huh? just really glad I'm not a clanner. That's all I have to say. I get yeah. to play with my inner sphere max. You guys, I, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, we hey, don't hey, care hey, too. I was hoping to mysteriously uh, see them in game before I ever saw art for them, but I guess we'll never have it. Oh. Hmm. All right. Yeah, so. I had that same opinion. They're oh. taking advantage of Christmas, I think, by releasing it here in December. I mean, it's almost at our doorstep right now. Okay, and Samurai? I have a, uh, just a couple thoughts on the Christmas timing. Uh, first one is, you know, more of a tinfoil hat one where IGP might have set a target income goal, and it's possible that PGI might have just missed it. And this is a desperate attempt to meet that goal. Uh, the others, mostly before they want to try and get some clan sales before U UI 2.0 and Community Warfare starts to roll out, simply because they know it's just going to turn people off so much. Molasses? I think it's weird they chose winter as the time to you know have these sales out, because not a whole lot of people are going to be buying these packages for like friends and family, they're going to be buying them for themselves. And since this game kind of has a older audience, most of these people are, you know, adults now and are at the point where they have to start buying presents for their families instead of just receiving only. So a lot of people are going to be broke this time of year. And I don't know how they can even afford, like, a $200 pack, which is the only pack that has the Mad Cat, by the way, which, you know, sneaky move, PGI. <laughs> and, Very you know, let alone a they're, $500 they're... max? Yeah, which, I mean, those are <laughs> jokes. Like, a $500 max are for people that just simply have no sense, and that's a completely different bracket of people. And that's the but first no, thing it's... I went for, was for the solitary Mad Cat, and the only one I could find was $500 fucking dollars. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's $210 for the package of the Mad Cat, and it comes with, like, six other stupid max you probably don't want. Yeah. And they knew that, like, that was, that was planned. Okay, Vass? Yeah, my theory for the pricing and the timing and everything is because they know that at this point it doesn't matter. They have, say, 5,000 players total who will grab deal. And they know these are the only 5,000 who will. If they price it at 40, they'll grab deal. If they price it at 400, they will grab deal. They won't get more because they burned too many bridges. Too many bridges have been burned. People, people everywhere 
<laughs> from fucking free player to overgold are saying this is this is too much. And the clan babies, well, they want their mad cat. So do some of the older players. They will buy it at 210 bucks, 5,000 sales, and that's it. It's all they're expecting to make. And that's why they did it like this. Okay. Alpha? Okay. Um, first off, I'd like to say I completely and wholeheartedly agree with Minproc. I'm actually probably among the youngest people who joined MechWarrior Online. I'm 19. And I... I, when I first heard of MechWare Online, I was thinking, oh man, I can't wait to get in my golden... I can't wait to pilot my Mad Cat. I can't wait to pilot a Vulture. And now I'm finding $210 clan mechs. And for one thing, the the artwork for the Mad Cat specifically looked like it was pulled right out of the Alpha Strike manual. Two, did anybody else think that the choices of mechs that they had decided to place were somewhat odd, like the Daishi... No, some... they were all very purposeful. Every yeah, all purposeful. Invasion. Same invasion, mean... Mexman. Yeah, but... like This is Nexon the... PhD education talking <laughs> here. Like, where was the Vulture? Where was the Shadow Cat? You know, the mechs that people remember, the ones that were oh, always featured oh, in the oh, intro. There's no something. mask. Sabers. Also, yeah, Labor and no mask. Let us remember for for whoever is an idiot enough to buy these a uh, freaking five hundred dollar golden max, they will forever be branded with the mark of shame, which is the Starcon over gold. <laughs> 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 they named them for me for once. I don't have to come up with a with a title. That's nice of PGI. Okay, not, Mech Warrior Buddha. Not only that, but I would team K. Team kill anyone that I saw with a bullet. <laughs> right off Jim, the bat. You're not the only one. You're not at all alone. <laughs> it's the less I mean, and, and this they... is coming from someone who was, you know, as, as short as a week ago, was the fact that these guys are down. Hey, how's it going? Why the hell would you ever spend more than $50 on any game ever? <laughs> all because right. we're done. I, I know, right? right? Alex. Right, you guys? Alex. Alex is up next. Yeah, it definitely looks like they know that they're running out of fish and whales, so they're just throwing the biggest, meanest nostalgia bomb they can find. And the interesting thing is, look how much time is it until the actual invasion. It's half a year. People right now are up in arms, they are oiling their pitchforks and putting them on fire, but Half a year is hell of a long time to rationalize a purchase of something you used to love as a child. There will except, be sales, definitely. Except it's not, Alex, because we've given them so many go- they, they've, they've broken every single- like, I, I can't even begin to explain this. You say half a year, but a full year ago they were still saying, Oh guys, UI 2.0 is going to be coming out this December, and that was last December. You uh, dare refuse my grab deal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't take a year okay. to the UI. All right, Mech Warrior Buddha. Well, the less players that they have in the game, you're going to see the prices go up more. What they're doing is they're culling the whales. They're trying to see who will stick out no matter what, no matter how the prices go from this point on. They're, they've been saying it's a cash out. Uh, they've got nothing in the game for any of this at this point except for concept art, and they still have to work on clan or um, community warfare and UI 2.0. They don't work on anything that they don't get money up front for. They don't hit um, hit uh, uh, deadlines on anything that they're not getting direct money for. The Phoenix shit came out like right on time, and as the, as we've been seeing them just point, pushing back UI on um, LTS and um, Lifetime and Star Trek Online. But it reminds me of that because, yeah, I know, right? I, I pick them, don't I? But uh, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of that because when the devs came onto the forums, they actually came onto the forums and said to us, if it wasn't for the cash shop that we have in game, you'd never see this stuff, so be grateful, unquote. And that's what these guys are doing to us. Wow. Okay, um, Franchi? I would just like to contrast P or, um, C uh, C uh, RSI's statement that they would feel bad taking money from their fans at this time you know christmas coming up all of us are older people who have to give gifts because you know we're adults and many of us have kids and then you compare that to pgi just grab 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 it really hey, it's really informative 
it's very, very purposeful, the choices they made here. Um, I pointed out, one of the first things I pointed out when I saw the grab deal on the website was the Mad Cat. Because I, I, I looked for it, because I knew it would be real high up. You can only get it for that $210. And that's really important, because that shows that they have learned how to banu us for the most amount of money they possibly can. They need to find that price point because they know that is the most iconic mech in history right now, that Mad Cat, and that is where everybody wants. Not only that, it's $210, but the high-end one, the Mascari one, that's only $30 more. Why not just do $30 more and get some more stuff? And that is exactly why they chose that. Yep. The yeah. Price. Yeah, something I wanted to point about about this. Do you guys remember when the first, uh, or when they started doing the Hero Mechs and they had a hard time monetizing them properly and they said, what can we do that won't be pay to win that we can encourage people to buy these? And we said, make them MC only for a couple weeks before you can buy them. Somewhere along the line, PGI extrapolated that into spend $210 for a cable TV deal package on a Mad Cat and get it yes. June 17th or wait until January. Once more, speaking, we're here though, because speaking, though, of that uh, yeah. old times, if you remember, they like, do you think we're crazy that we wouldn't sell people mad cats that wanted them? Because I know but, Vass remembers that. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's yeah, talking about that one that. particular yep. post. That was back in closed beta. Everyone's talking about how these things are going to be available in June. When if you don't actually buy the deal, they're not available until months later. Like right. almost, almost, next year. almost next year. 2015. This is an absolutely ridiculous plan. And before plan. 2015. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Ugu. Um, the reason why they put the Madcat so high is fairly obvious. But um, now, I, I guess it's some kind of method to get people to buy a Warhawk 2 with only being a short jump up to get the full pack. Because who would want a Warhawk right now? You cannot fire off the PPCs with all this ghost heat and clan tech getting even more ghost heat. But it would just go boom. And I don't believe that they will put an actual targeting computer. I don't believe they can make a targeting computer. <laughs> Alright, Spectral? Well, I, you know, just echo what everyone else has said. I mean, as someone who has gone out of their way to defend the game, and defend the devs because I do still enjoy playing it. You know, you you have all these things that they promised us for years now, and none of them are in the game. How do they justify after just coming out with a package? You know, you guys have waited for Clan Max. Here's our two hundred and forty dollar package, but it's only ten dollars a mech. You can't. To me, you. You could be the biggest fan person in the world and still not, you know, hop on board for that. I just don't understand that rationale. In the long term of keeping people buying mechs and, and net cash and everything, how do you expect your game to survive more than a year or two? In doing that, I just, I don't get it. Cocaine Samurai. Uh, we actually kind of should have been able to figure out that this is coming just based on the Phoenix packaging. Uh, forcing you to buy the Locust before you could even move up. Because I don't think you could find anybody who would willingly buy a Locust on its own. And it's just a prime example with the Mad Cat sitting at 210, while the, while the Thor, which is a very similar weight, is sitting at 90. Well, they no. could always make more money if they just sold the mechs individually. But they'll is never there, know. They, can. Is there really they only have out? so many who are willing to even buy now, this makes no sense. This is this is how they make the most money. Right. There's still really going to be a lot of people rock. buying this, though. There's still going to be a lot more than you want, because there are people that were specifically waiting just for clans to play this. Yeah. Game. But is, right. is there really going to be someone that buys a $500 Uler? You know, yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's got to be somebody who doesn't know. That is There's the beauty already. about Mech yeah. Warrior, though. That people have bought $1,000 spaceships, so people that is the one mech. always mech have that kill. mech. No. If you sell bling, someone's going to want to buy it. That they love. Everybody has theirs. Nobody loves the fucking kit fucks though. Some people do actually. Okay, okay. Now, <laughs> Bushwhacker now, all day, every day. We gotta get everyone's <laughs> favorite ranter in here, Valkyrie. So, sorry for showing up a little bit late, guys, but uh, I was doing some stuff earlier. Wait, I was going to say, there's something, I'm not sure if it's been said since obviously I showed up late, but 
Um, something that I saw pointed out on the gold forums that was very, very accurate is the fact that you note this, note the deliver by date. It's, it's intentionally set to a certain date, so that way anything, anybody who buys now is going to be out of their credit card companies from the major three credit cards, MasterCard, Amex, and uh, Visa. They'll be out of the, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Chargeback. Yeah, they'll all be out of the chargeback date range. Um, statute of limitations is what I'm looking for. So, <laughs> effectively, they've learned from the Phoenix grab deal and the the Saber grab deal, and they're making it so that way. If you make it, if you buy it now and you wait until then, and then right before you decide, I don't want to do it, you can't do anything about it. You're done. You you they have your money and they're gonna run away with it to Vegas or to Mexico or whatever the fuck. And then secondly, like also Vegas. Wonders, Vegas was actually really nice. I did enjoy it. I got to shoot an M60. It was fucking sweet. <laughs> um, Five hundred dollars to buy a lot of things too. I don't. That's what really kind of blows my mind. Like with with Star Citizen, I can kind of understand where people are coming from with the whole Idris thing. Is it's it's something you can earn in game, but at the same time, they want to show that they're really, really dedicated to making this happen. But five hundred dollars will buy five hundred dollars bought me a DSLR last month. It bought me half of my computer. Um, it can buy me a PS4 at this point. It's almost enough to buy me another M1 Garand. I can spend five hundred dollars on a lot of things and get a lot more mileage out of it than a gold fucking mech. We've got two hundred and ten dollar Timberwolves that are about the price of a constellation that you can share with multiple people, a Corvette sized thing, compared to something that only you can enjoy. Then there's the fact that we're probably gonna have clan reinforcement soon and you'll wanna add money to that. And then we're missing the Shadow Cat, Mad Dog, and Hellbringer. And then all this is going on, and these mechs are just going to be dropped right into the ELO with no freaking. with nothing. It's just going to be clans with Intersphere mechs just running around, blowing the hell out of each other with a red square. Community Back warfare will not be implemented before clan mechs. We will never have separated. But in all honesty, did anyone here ever think for one second that we would see community warfare begin with? No. No bliss. Yeah, I, th I think we'd see like a crappy one, maybe. No bliss. Did I? Now go ahead and skip me, man. We're still waiting uh, for the Java map. <laughs> okay, Alpha. I... Yes. This this is something that has actually pissed me off about this whole thing. I mean, aside from the fact that they're charging like two hundred ten dollars for the Mad Cat, which is offensive enough as is, the we're what I constantly was looking through, and I knew that the, between the Summoner, the Loki, and the Vulture, there was probably only going to be a couple of them that were going to get selected to be in this grab deal. But what I was constantly thinking is, why would you implement the Summoner over the Vulture? The Vulture has an infinitely more viable weapon system, that, that, that's, which is not saying because much, because the, Vult, because they, the Thor is fucking terrible. They want you to terrible, buy it but... as a Saber package. That's exactly because it. some of us but love the Thor. Like, yeah. it, it's, yeah, it's been like in every intro of MechWarrior since MechWarrior 2. That's it's... why you're not getting it. They want you to grab it more. Enjoy! Well, yet. And you're not going to be able to buy the, the clan saber package or whatever the fuck they decide to call it by itself. So the people who no. just want the Vulture will have to buy at least an Uller and then buy the Vulture 2. That's and the then price. they'll attach like a $750 price tag to those, to those said to get the golden version. Yep. <laughs> I expect it to cost Welcome. More. Welcome to the machine. Okay, mouse GMR. Alright, um, Alpha, just to sort of respond to that, um, Summoner, that's in because Aiden Pride, and people love that mech because of that. Um, right, Community Warfare. This is a great indication that basically Community Warfare isn't going to be in before 2015. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that Community Warfare obviously needs factions, and the major faction differences between, in, in Battletech, is the clans versus the Inner Sphere. The fact is, is that the clans aren't going to be able to field any reasonable amount of clan mechs across the general population, apart from those that grab deal, um, until kind of November, December, when you start getting hold of things like the Timberwolf and the Stormcrow, which are your main line-fighting, uh, decent, equipable clan mechs. So, you know, you're not going to be able to do clan war community warfare. It's just not going to exist. So this, to me, is a great indication that they just basically don't care. Hey, Mint Frog? Uh, we know for sure that CW isn't going to be coming before clan mechs because anything that would reveal how low the player numbers are, they're going to drag their feet on as long as possible. That's the, why they've been dragging their feet on the private lobbies. They can't have those people leaving the general queue. That's why they've been dragging their feet on CW, because he 
they they put up the big map of the inner sphere and there's only a few lights up it's going to be pretty obvious that they only have a concurrent player number of maybe three four or five thousand during prime time it's not enough for cw it's not enough to have separate queues for clan inner sphere they don't have the player numbers and anything that reveals that they're going to wait as long as humanly possible to, to reveal okay iggy you know i know we've all pondered a lot of the fact that community warfare won't come because the clans basically are non-existent you know all the stuff we've seen so far is just concept art and oh well wouldn't it be cool if clan tech worked like this but i almost feel like there might be a darker thought here and i know it's kind of something we've always joked about but could they just be stalling time until they get that sweet sweet xbox deal and then they can dump it all to somebody else sub license it out to have somebody pad out the rest of the game they take their money and they run. No. Awesome. That's just stupid. The thing is, on Xbox, that would whenever be they update, they get charged for it. They're yeah, not going to do something they do. they're going to be updating for at a loss. It's the reason why TF2 sort of splintered off and didn't really do anything on Xbox. It's because they couldn't do updates. Bass? Yeah, I was just going to talk about community warfare and how awful this whole thing is. You, you will probably not see community warfare for a very long time assuming they will ever even add it because they need ui 2.0 first and then they will be dedicated to the clan grab deal and clan releases i think we're gonna have we might have the loyalty points <laughs> when they release oh, the clan. oh yes of course yeah. they'll bring we in might. new fucking currency that is but see, every free to plays thing i am i'm not sure they are because the clan max do not have a loyalty bonus Unlike the Phoenix Max. So maybe maybe position changed on the whole loyalty points. I mean, who knows? Who knows, right? What I do know is we'll not be playing clans unless you grab deal. <sighs> yeah, sad but true. Mouse. Um, I just want to leave these links here. This is what PGI has made on community warfare, and believe me, it's completely underwhelming. Yeah, like it's well, a surprise. Yeah, it's PGI. Oh no, that's the standard we have. <laughs> minimum viable, viable. Minimum viable game design. All right. I mean, Mech there wow. is no okay. final product. Yeah, I was gonna drop those XML um, paste bin uh, links too. Um, I got them from somebody from Reddit. He told me that he was uh, looking around in the XML files and he found that all of the um, all of the the modules that they're going to be doing, all of the achievements that they're going to be doing, all of the planets, the um, planets, the planet descriptions, the whole CW layout is already in the XMLs. They've already done the work. They're no, all telling us that, that they're going to do that shit. Was in there a long time ago. I remember this going is through ancient. all the files. This is very ancient. Very they're ancient. not going to do that anymore. They've moved. This on. is extremely old. It's been there for a long time, but the thing Sorry, is guys. that they haven't updated it at all, so they've made no progress. Well, yeah. the other part, the other part to the point that I was going to make was that um, we're not going to be seeing new mechs in this game outside of the ones that they've already told us about for a better part of a year. When they dropped Phoenix, we stopped seeing non-Phoenix mechs being added to the game. We're not going to see the flea for at least another year because they um, they're not going to be putting it in um, anything other than the, the damn friggin' uh, gold mechs. Well, no, well, see, that that's where require. you're wrong, because they have to put in Mask in order to put in some of those no. gold mechs. <laughs> they do not. Yeah, the they would, yeah right. Okay. Sure. All right, right. right. Alex, closing thoughts? Okay, guys. How about you consider this? What if they crunch real hard, change their position, and put out a bare-bones version of Community Warfare by, let's say, March, while the clan uh, grab deal is still in effect? And the community, the clanners, the hardcore ones who now chant no clans before community warfare, come back on their knees and say, okay, you clearly put in work, take our money. If they, but, all they have to do is show up with minimal viability again. But you're and assuming they can like score big. community warfare is going to be anything more than with the current 12v12 deathmatch mode with some kind of point tracker that, I mean, they don't have enough players to make big teams of 12 anymore. You're not going to be able to pick like all well, this team on this side is uh, going to randomly put people together and throw them into deathmatch. You just Wait, need but a community warfare, not the right. community warfare. I think we've I run our course, guys. So let's move on. 
So while this whole nightmare is going on, Blue Lizard Games, who's working on Met Warrior Tactics, <laughs> is still assembling their offices and hasn't even started oh my work God, yet. Really? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, they're joking. No, they haven't done yeah. it. It's not. It's worse than I thought it was. They're oh. in the same place CIG was with their Austin office, just not a few weeks ago. Indefinitely. All right, yeah. Kalis. For those of you who don't know who Blue Lizard Games is, they are the dev that got basically uh, pushed in the place of the other one, Roadhouse, that Tactics was doing, because ta uh, Roadhouse apparently didn't do their job very well. And Blue Lizard is a they make free free to play mobile games, so you can see how great that game is going to go. And then <laughs> to, top, to top this whole nightmare off. Sins of a Dark Age is now no longer coming. Well, it is, oh, it is not being published by yeah. IGP. Well, no, yeah, they spoke no, from IGP. They're still tell, being Tell released. us, Malfs, what have you, what have you learned? Uh, what have I learned? Well, let's see. Who's, whoever's making Sins, I don't keep up with them, but I'm I know that they broke that. off from IGP because they got sick of IGP soon and blah, 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 blah. Basically, they're independent from what I know. And, and they who will can blame self publish them? on Steam. Congratulations. In case you didn't know, Sins is a MOBA, basically, that P IGP were really because proud of at one point, and yeah, here we are. Because we need another one of those. Didn't IGP funnel money into that? Yes, yes. all your founders and then they said... went into that, went into MechWarrior Tactics, so, you know, no. you helped fund it if you were a founder. No, it seems like we're like a, a, a common theme to, like, scrap a, you know, a decent game in favor of making a new MOBA. Sort of no, like the best thing is, is that we funded that game, and then they just split off from IGP and say, no, we're not having any of you. Well, the funniest <laughs> part is that their game is probably going to make more money than MechWarrior did. <laughs> they just took the money Steam. and ran. That's delicious. It'll probably be an actually fun game, or even... Oh, definitely. If, and if not, it'll just make more money. And just How soon money. before Tactics is cut loose, and PGI <laughs> for that matter? I thought it was already cut loose. Tactics Maybe it's gonna be the first to go. Moba. No, it's just a forever beta. Forever closed beta. Never gonna be open. Enjoy. Grab deal founders, guys! Grab deal! Uh, is, it, is the grab deal founders for Tactics still going? I think it is. Yes, yes it is. Yes. It's now over a year. They just recently delivered the founders mix, though. Over a thousand dollars in value. <laughs> <laughs> well, did Best people get their founders ever. atlas, actually? Alright. Huh? So we're moving on to the uh, weekend articles here. PCGamesN.com. MechWare Online now has gold-plated mechs. They'll sell to you for 500 bucks. This is this nice little snippet here. Hopefully we'll see a few big updates to the game between now and the mech's release in June. Fat the chance. game's hit its full release, but it's still lacking features like the whispered about clan war mode. <laughs> if Piranha continues pushing out new mech variants instead of developing the game, then they may find their audience moves elsewhere. That would be a great shame because the game of Mech Warrior Online's core is excellent fun. Well... The core of the game, yes, is actually fun. I like the whole, like, driving around and blowing up mechs. I actually still play. Um, I actually dropped today. I've got, like, 15 people that I play with. I kind of feel bad that I got a friend of mine into this game, actually. And he um, bought two hero mechs and has, like, six months of um, premium time. So I kind of feel bad for that part of it. But the, you know, dropping and blowing shit up, I actually find it fun. The rest of the game, not so much. Okay, move on to the Forbes one. All right, all right. <laughs> the big and, one. <laughs> and then the Forbes article we got. Which well, has I'm, nice... I'm very glad that Forbes finally got around... Somebody from Forbes finally got around to writing this. I've been asking Eric Kane to write something about this for months and never heard back from him, but... And we have, Someone had to But do it. skipping the loyalty building process to earn that kind of devotion and putting massively expensive items on sale in a brand new game that is very much still at work in progress seems like an insult to the fans that have stuck by you i Jim? agree I, I think he really did hit a really important point here um people will laugh long and hard about this 500 hundred dollar skin thing but that's not really why this is a big deal imagine a fantasy world where mwo were the game we all wanted to be it were a fantastic game where you got lobbies and the net code is great it's well balanced all the mechs look wonderful and, you know, PGI has just been a fantastic dev from the heavens. Just imagine that. 
Now then say, okay, clan mechs come out. You can buy each of them individually for a reasonable price. But then there's also an exclusive skin for 500 bucks. Just imagine that scenario if you can. It still seems silly, but hey, I'm fine with it. Someone's going to give a few hundred bucks to a dev who's done awesome things for me. That's, that's fine. I mean, a little odd maybe, but hey, you know, more power to them. The problem here is that that's not the world we're in. They have done nothing to deserve this money, and anyone who gives it to them is absolutely a fool. Iggy? Yeah, you know, um, I remember back in Closed when they finally injected the founders in, and it, everybody, you know, who was in to begin with and didn't pay to get in, started to get really weird about it. We started to feel like, uh, what the hell's going on? And, you know, all the devs, they used to drop with us. And so it was like, oh, no, 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 we're just doing this to give people a chance to buy into the game and all that. And it's always been something that as time's gone on, you talk to some of the original, you know, the original testers, and it's this sentiment that has just always been with us. And the guy in the Forbes article, start of that uh, last paragraph, he just sums it up perfectly when he says, it feels like it focuses more on microtransactions than was healthy. And I think with the clan packs, now we are finally seeing this, you know, go from just this little itch to something malignant. And it's really too bad. Okay, Alpha One. Yes, um, so there are a lot of things in the Forbes article which I think is very pertinent to it, but I, I would like to mention that this, that this has been an ongoing trait of what PGI has been doing for the past, how long now? A year? Over a year and a Since half? Since the start. Yeah, they've been literally running their game off of grab deals after grab deals after grab deals while making delays on content that people want, that people have been dreaming about for years on end now. And then they start implementing crap that nobody wants. Ghost Heat, Coolant Flush, Third Person View, the latter two of which nobody wanted in this game at all. And on top of that, they have had the audacity to release grab deal after grab deal with the unseen mechs getting reseen and resold to us. And every and now it's clan max being sold for two hundred dollars to five hundred dollars for just for the shit that people want actually want to right. have. Okay, Alex. There's a saying that any press is good press. I guess <laughs> that at, there's a point where that stops applying because now we have Forbes on board. This is an unprecedented disaster when it comes to computer games, I think. So much crap <laughs> being, being destroyed and... Oh my, this game is becoming the flying Dutchman of computer entertainment. <laughs> a cautionary tale to all. It's amazing to be I a part I couldn't of have it. said it better. Protection? the damn boogeyman. I just, I just gotta say, it's, it's, this Forbes article is really good. It's a reality check to a lot of the competitive teams that are still remaining that still think that maybe someday Mac, MWO could be salvaged and turned into a great game. I think this is kind of like the knock on the door saying that's never going to happen. I find especially funny the line in the first article of um, how people are going to move on to other games if they don't stop this. Because I and many others who are here today are exactly because we already moved Killed on are here today. I mean, you, you mentioned the um, Star Citizen threat last episode. I'm here because of that. So many people already moved on. For the most part, the, the article, it was a pretty good article, you know, made a lot of good points. The, the, I think the one thing the guy was kind of unfair about, he did say that, you know, the mechs that you pay for are like a tier of their own. That, like, he made it sound that if you want to stay competitive, you have to buy these mechs. And I, well, that's and, yeah, a good I, point. Of all the, the faults we can give Piggy, they have yeah. not. Nothing, maybe the Miz, maybe, maybe the Miz. There is well, no pay to win. There's pay to lose, but not pay to win. <laughs> well... <laughs> There's pay to, to pay to expedite winning. As in, badly. Like the closest they've come to pay to win is the hero max, and those are pretty damn situational. Right. All right. It depends We're on the meta. On. We're moving on to clan mech variants. What is prime oh. and an omni mech variant? Who's <sighs> gonna knock this shit out? Just so you know, uh, stock Mouse? equipment does Mouse come with the mechs. Choice. So you Mouse do get your XLs, your dubs, your 7-crit endo, and your 7-crit ferrofibrous. Mouse GMR? 
Yeah, um, okay, well, I mean, you, really, your silence is your best choice. I mean, you've got um, your prime variants, your basic loadouts, and your uh, your variants, your weapon mod combinations based on that. You've got your base chassis, like PGI have done it, um, you know, set engines, set armor, set criticals, um, and set, you know, then you've got replacement pods, the arms come off, the shoulders come off, um, and different gear goes in those appropriate locations. It's about which ones they're going to pick, um, really, out of the lot. You know, usually most clan mechs go through prime through to i believe f um with the h variant later on in the years when the heavy lasers start started coming out um so the, it's fairly close to how it's supposed to be out of all the things that i've read recently and i know the way in which they do in the clan tech in terms of its closeness to law um is quite good but the problem with it is is it just doesn't fit with the game because the game is full of mad customization frank and mech simulator where you can take like a cataphract out and strip it down to one point of rear armor everywhere and now you've got a mech that is considerably tougher than a timberwolf in a front on front engagement so you know where's the fairness there exactly mint frog they really painted themselves into a corner by moving away from the stock mech only situation for the interstellar mechs because now you have clan mechs and they're supposed to be interchangeable and like they're going to end up less customizable than the inner sphere mechs they're going to be going up against it's kind of bizarre. infuriating <laughs> it's bizarre it is <laughs> it's, it's strange it's, it's so amazing weird. to me because they just don't understand the game they don't understand what makes it fun and everything they do just muddies up the water so much that they can't make heads or tails of it. You try to read through Paul's document, and it's clear that he doesn't understand a lot of the he things he's talking about. He has no grasp. No, seriously, he has no grasp over what he's nerfing or fixing or whatever he thinks he's doing. Right. Anybody um, familiar with the rules knows it's broken to shit. Right. Really if is. I may interject on something funny here while we're on the subject, uh, I think... I mean, we've been here, we don't really play anymore, but despite that, we probably played more, and we still play more regular than the PGI crew, bad <laughs> as it may be. Well, <laughs> I'd like to point hang something on. out. Like, here, you as, go first. As far as clan mechs go and balancing and all that stuff, why are they messing with the actual mechs? Why not just make it like, you know, one star of clan mechs <laughs> versus like two regular lances of, you know, inner sphere mechs? So make it like 5v8. Because, because, you know, PGI. that's the only reason why the Inner Sphere ever won in the first place. Just because they would drown them in corpses. Alright, Franchi. You know, the biggest problem with the whole clans and clans variants is that they can't just have a clan mech with Omni hardpoints because they have a system already in place that forces them to sell you three mechs. And that's just... That's the whole problem with why the clan mech seems so confusing. And then the way they're trying to balance them. Locked to stock armor, they're death traps. Locked with stock engines, um, they're death traps. Or slow. Boogoo. Uh, it's fairly in line with the whole development process of what they have been doing in, well, since since close beta, really. They have always used placeholders. They have making placeholders for game modes, for pretty much everything, and then they just continued using them. The hard point system, for instance, was always a problem, but it became very apparent that they would not ever change it because a lot of things, a lot of people have made fairly good ideas about how you could handle hard points differently, but they have never changed it, so it was fairly obvious they would use the exact same shit pretty much for Clan Max. They will not ever drop it. It's just the laziest possible implementation. It's, how, it's just how they work. Okay, Mech Warrior Isn't Buddha? Uh, I was going to laugh about the stock armor for one, because, yeah, that's going to make them into death traps. Another point is, is how many slots are you gonna, the clan mech engine is going to take up? In TT, they should be taking up two, but that's going to, by themselves, make them OP. Just, just by that, just right there. Um, the other part kind of dovetails into the next topic being where they're going to be making it so that you can change inter, um, interchange the body parts. How is that by itself not going to make it OP? You can't do that with the um with the inner sphere max. Who the hell is going to do that and not be um like stacking as much uh, ballistics as they can? Okay, Alpha, closing okay. thoughts. Yeah, um, I think everyone's pretty much summed up uh what everyone has to say. Um, the one thing I have to say, reading through how he's 
Paul is wanting to balance Clan Max is that he literally has no fucking idea what he's doing. Uh, he's increasing the duration of lasers in order to burn faster and decreasing the minimum range of LRMs so that they do less damage in that exponential curve. So, yeah. Actually, I Paul think when it no came to the lasers... And upping the tonnage. What so, I think happened when it came to the lasers is he didn't actually... Uh, do anything really all he did was extend the burn time so there's even more ticks to meet up with clan damage yep right it's okay moving it's on pay to sandpaper Mouse. um it's about the clan xl engines these things are a bit worrisome but knowing pgi's track record are they really going to have an alternative xl engine programmed into the game no. well, what are the chances just to let everybody know the way at Clan Excels work, you it's have to two kill slots. You two can lose a side sections. and not die. You can, you have to lose two sides or the CT and a side before you lose the mech. It's not yeah. like the Inner Sphere ones. The Just way so it works understand. is that if you lose three slots of your engine, you die. But a Clan XL only takes up two slots. So now the big worry is: are they lazy and they're going to keep the old XL Inner Sphere system for the current? Which means every single clan mech will die to a single torso hit. You just answered yeah. your own question. Well, either that, or every <laughs> single clan mech will only die when its center torso is destroyed. Because I don't believe that they have set up a system where really three crit spots have to be dead. It's just one half of the mech, and there you go. Right. Yeah, that sounds like work. Okay, Greg. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. Uh, fuck. Just go with the flow, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everyone just, is this, nervous in their this, first joke or talk. Greg is the spaghetti <laughs> monster. Don't worry. It we'll sucks. Cut, It'll get edited We'll cut out. it out. Just say it. Just take your time. But uh, it's just... The the whole the whole fucking just I I thought the the, the gold plated max was bad but the the way that they're the balancing it's just it's just it's just another fucking pitfall I I don't I don't I I can't imagine how this this could get any worse I I I'm I'm honestly just oh, trying to get back for online I I I I don't I don't even know why I still have it installed. <laughs> <laughs> that was we'll Relax, take man. that. We'll take Relax. that. Relax, man. You are mad, man. <laughs> that was great. Well, okay, just, okay. I don't know why I have it installed. That's a great job, Greg. <laughs> good job, Greg. Good good All right, move However, on topics, we, uh, Connor. We, we do know how okay. you can sort of work the Omni system. So well, tell actually, us, Connor. I've got a theory. Um... My theory is basically this. We all know how Artemis and Dubs work. I believe there's going to be a cost for each arm. Probably two to three million. On top of that, you're going to have to own the variant of the Omnipod you want. So if you've got a Madcat Prime, in order to have the arms from the Madcat B, you're going to have to own a Madcat B. So the 24 million Madcat just became 48 with an additional 6 or so, or who knows what. So you're looking at a $60 million build you're trying to make. And that's what I think. I do not know. You can never guess with Paul. It's so, only 300 hours, you entitled motherfucker. Oh, God. Alex, <laughs> get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> Speaking of Omnimax, have you noticed how the Clanmax arms look very familiar? Because they're basically boxes with some barrels strapped to them already on the concept art level. This is basically what's been happening to the old Max, the Inner Sphere ones. Does the Omnimax look mm. identical to Battle Max with the same interchangeable one size fit all? Something for arms. It's very Lego Max. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But so we got spreading. You Geary? Yeah. The one question that people's been asking a lot that I've been seeing is where does the ECM go? My what people might think is it go in the side torso, but w what if it goes in the center torso? What if it goes in the head? It could fit there too. Well, unlike Inner Sphere mechs, uh, Clan ECM is just a little piece of equipment that is added into mechs as they need it. It's nothing special. <laughs> okay, Fugu. Yeah, but they can't make it like this, you know? ECM is one set piece they have in the game, and they won't change it. They won't do anything to it. So basically, now you can have your Omni Mac if you buy all the variants, and even then you will not properly have an Omni Mac. And I called this shit what half year ago or so. It's yeah. really goddamn sad. Around half a year ago, basically. 
Mouse GMR. Um, yeah, so on the topic of stock equipment coming with carbon purchases, um, well, it's pretty scummy, to be honest, to make you buy the entire mech just to get an arm uh, to be able to fit it to your mech if that's what you want. I mean, I like the <laughs> customization that they've that's been thinking about. That's if you think about that. Yeah, You're buying a whole mech. I need that arm. I need that leg. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here you go. I gotta so have that five fucking million. cockpit. <laughs> True Captain yeah. Planet And then you have to logic. pay two million to swap the arm over. Oh, exactly, man. man. It's gonna it be fucking awesome. Bounce. Definitely well, up the whole lot I'm actually theory. a big fan of this idea because it allows you to further customize your unit. It makes the game a bit more in depth when you're trying no. to make a build but or the something. Cost. No. The, the cost, the huge progressive yes, cost. The idea, the idea is interesting. The idea so, like, I like, I've got... but unless they allow you to pick and choose like a pick and pull, there's no fucking point. Yeah, yes, like build more Lego it depends on how they do it. Build more Lego Max. If it allows we no me to take have a mech, mech base, we have salvage yards now. <laughs> <laughs> if it allows me to take a mad cat and put I've... ballistic arms on it, then that's Give pretty the... neat. Yeah, you gotta spend two hundred ten bucks for that, though, bro. bro. Give the mad cat like actual hand actuators. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you guys have you seen the super glue max? What I huh? call them? Basically, huh? someone takes super glue and they roll their mechs around in parts in the mech bay to see. You what mean Hawkman? Oh, no, 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 specifically <laughs> mech warrior. No, you know those builds that you just look at and go, why does he have two narcs and, like, a medium Why laser? does he have three command modules? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, Let's move well, on here. Alpha though. 1. Okay, yeah. I, actually, I have to agree. The, the Omni-Mech system isn't the most egregiously terrible idea that they've ever come up with. But at the same time, I mean, let's be honest here. Which mechs does this pretty much invalidate? Because, uh, let's face it, if you don't have ballistic mechs, then you're basically piloting a dead-on-arrival mech. So the Mad Cat is dead because it only has one variant that has one ballistic arm. Daishi is dead because it can't boat enough of them. Summoner is dead because it's terrible. Well, that's the armor, which we have no idea yeah. if it's going to be. But, oh, yeah. And you the... can't switch out the equipment. You can't switch out the armor. You We've can't... been over that. Oh, yeah. But I thought, have we? Mm, yeah, I think so we, we have. Been over have we? To be honest, okay. everything's but fake. Okay. we got to move on here. All right. Alex? So, apparently you cannot swap internals in Omnimax, like engine, right? So some of those mechs are supposed to be dead on arrival because none of the clan lights, for example, is going to break yeah. 100 kph. Stop. <laughs> Wait, you what? Pi uh, add yeah, they, they to it and you're basically piloting, uh, you're basically piloting uh, Raven 4X, only maybe lighter if it's an Oler. Enjoy. But the, here's the question. Do you think they're going to add efficiencies or modules to unlock, for example, torso. Engine swap unlocked. Congratulations. Oh, oh. I think we've, we've figured out what the secret slot, what the secret module is, haven't we? Seems likely when you think about it. Oh, God, to remove the actual parts? <laughs> because In to make it so Honestly. you can unlock it. Uh, Honestly, uh, how, otherwise, the how keys are you going to the shut up. engine. Uh, you are giving <laughs> them ideas. Shut stop up. Stop making jokes. Shut up. <laughs> please stop. You're making jokes. Oh no. no. Please stop. We're, we're all doomed. We're okay. all doomed. All right, dude bot. All right, I just had a, a crazy idea with all these Lego mix. If say if we were still in a duplicate world where repair rearm still worked, what would happen for a clan repair rearm? Would you pay oh. two million dollars for a new arm? Oh, it would be fucking astronomical. You're giving them Game ideas. Over. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you die three times, you have to buy a new clan mech. All right. So, with the game being as displeasing as it is, the rules being completely screwed up, it seems now we're finally losing enough players that they're wanting to get rid of the 12 man queue and the 4 man queue, and now we're going to full blown closed, closed beta. Closed beta again. Pub ghetto. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. This means that we now have no option to play with first person only. Yep. Yep. Oh, exactly. yep. Shit. Just like Whoops. we predicted you know, a long I time this, ago. I called this <laughs> back when third person was first talked about. I called all the progression to this point. He's right, then. he is. <laughs> <laughs> and we joked We've, about it. We've Sorry, just gone full circle. Alright. Breaking Death new ground. Light.
Death like. Oh lord. I, mean, I think PGI is just easy to guess. Maybe I don't think it's because we're all psychic. I think it's just because you can just anybody can call this crap a mile away. All right, guys, give them some space. Oh, oh well, this is just gonna. You knew this was just gonna happen. You had first of all, you had um, you have no uh, multi-region servers, no separate first-person queues. No, you only have limited four mans and and used to be eight man, now twelve, and which are empty. Like like I played a couple nights ago, twelve mans, and I only dropped against one team the whole fucking night. That was that. That's how bad it is. So if you think about the prog the regression of these queues, this is this is expected to happen. If you think about it, it's we're we're screwed. Boogoo. I find this interesting because it's pretty much the closest PGI has ever come to actually say, yes, we made a mistake. They're just taking that shit system out of it, and I believe it's because they really want to have the group players back into the game. Because pretty much all giant groups quit by now, or they have like four or five players still playing. I, I believe their player numbers are just shit right now. Or they're just Actually, bitterly though, making casts about the they show. They did but not admit it before it. once. <laughs> they removed R and R. That's the closest you've true. ever seen them. Okay. And that yeah, was a but they never really war. acted upon it. They said that it was punitive. That was their words. Punitive. And a fun tax. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that was it said. I actually think this is one of their better ideas because before twelve mans would probably take like eight to twenty minutes to actually get into a game. Now you can get into a game a lot faster, and plus you can drop with like eight mans and all that instead of going with four or twelve. Less pub carry, so the match is quicker. Mint Frog? Like I said before, they're going to do anything and everything they can to conceal the player number issue. Yes. And this, of course, is their last ditch attempt to buff the queues because there aren't enough 12 mans running and there aren't enough no. of the general population running, so push them all together. That buys them a little bit more time. But that's the ship's still sinking, and it's obvious. Hey, Vass? Yeah, we, we said earlier that it was fun during close beta, you know? We've been saying that a lot, haven't we? It's like, the game was fun back in close beta, right? So, I yeah. think what PGI is thinking here is, since we make jokes about that, that's why they're giving us close beta back, with a broken UI, fucking 12-man Uber drops everywhere, broken weapon balancing, you know. A pay to lobby. I'd like to interject. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, with us being able to take 12 mans into the pub ghetto again, does this possibly mean Kong might start playing again because the game's fun no. again? Just no. kidding. <laughs> no. No. No one's going no. to. Like, it's, no. not, it's not fun smashing things to death instantly. There's just no... Game's just not what it yeah. used to be. Mouse the meta game is still fucked, so... Yeah, exactly. We can drop it 12, yep. alright? We can drop it 12, so... Yeah, we, we can drop, drop against DDCs. the same guys. But it's 12 All on 12, right. same metagame, same max. So I nope. was pretty surprised to, uh, to hear that, to be honest. Obviously, you know, 12-man action being some of the more interesting side of the MetGory Online, at least that some people are engaged in. Um, but, you know, it, it does actually make complete sense. I understand why they're doing it, because if Piggy can't monetize something, then they don't want to support it. Um, so, basically, it's just for the pay-to-lobby system. They're going to get rid of the ability to... 12 man up and then drop until you get into a, um, a mirror drop with the team that you want to fight against through sync dropping and instead what they're doing is they're going well we're not going to let you do that shit anymore we're going to force you to use our pay to lobby system because it gives us money um, you know I think it's pretty much sums up why community warfare hasn't come around yet either because they haven't figured out how they're going to monetize it yet and I think that pretty much just sums up their company entirely okay Franchi well when they introduced third person and they gave us a 12 man queue as first person only, they knew that there wouldn't be enough to s sustain it, and they knew that they would be able to remerge it and say that first person view was never that popular. They're ignoring, you know, all the difficulties that are involved, and all the people who championed this decision to separate 12 mans or 8 mans at the time are now getting shafted, and there's still, many of them are still the white knights of the PGI Defense Force. Oh, no. <laughs> the deal's getting worse all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this deal's getting Freaking worse Lando. The God damn it, Russ. Alright, Deathlike. Um, if you've been watching, paying attention to the boards, you there's one thing that they've been complaining about. People complaining about how pre-mades and versus 
pug, like solo pugs. Well, this is gonna make it worse. You should. I mean, this is gonna explode once it once it happens. Yeah, back to close beta. Can you yeah. see the future for this game? I think I nope. can. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Dot AVI. Primary production is devoted to releasing mech content on time. Quality of yeah. life no longer a priority. Our community warfare is delayed and now back delayed. in design. Yeah. UE 2.0, many features are stalled behind this nebulous milestone. Treatment of players and customers is an all-time low. <laughs> C3? Well, it seems to have disappeared and disintegrated. We can't seem to find them on their own webpage anymore. Yeah, PGI is not listed. That. Yeah, I was I checked around. I don't know why, because I'm used to all the buttons in there. And I found there's no button for downloading C3. You might not even have used it, but basically it's it's like TeamSpeak, except Mac Warrior theme. But guys, new yeah. store. New store. They have this website where all these dudes are on. They have this. Their programs are on every fucking video game out there. And they used to be um, pretty tight with PGI, but now PGI is not listed there anymore. Hmm, I wonder what's happening. And the cherry on top of all of this, careers at PGI. They've got more openings for an art director, a game designer, and a UE designer. So, Fugu, what have you got to say? I don't believe there's a future for the game. I mean, they broke their backs to bring out the Phoenix pack in time. They barely made it, albeit without those in-game badges. And now they say that they are going to give us 10 mechs up until July with um, different weapons and all different systems and so on and so forth. And they want to make it. They have to make it because otherwise people are going to refund. So basically we're not getting anything besides that up until June 17th. And if we are getting UI 2.0, it's only because they will have to have those in-game badges in. So it's non-content up until summer. So, no. Okay, Mint Frog? Uh, it's pretty clear that the game is who are, and these guys are just way, way behind. Um, they've been using the UI 2.0 as a bottleneck thing, as an excuse for anything and everything whenever they've been called out. Um, even when I asked the, did the ask the dev question about, well, why aren't you guys running achievements every week to keep people interested in playing the game? They responded, oh, well, that's going to be a UI 2.0 feature. Well, what happens in the, the time patch. between now? <laughs> you already did two achievements. Why aren't you doing them every Jesus week? Patch. It's like every single thing that that we've offered, both both Kong and the goons and everyone else who's offered constructive criticism to keep the game going and to expand the player base, they've ignored it because they literally will do the laziest thing they can do and get away with it. It's a minimum, minimum viable product, whatever that, that line is. Um, That's just, what it is. Just as a, a closing statement here, I'll, I'll let you guys talk. Um, I was always raised to take pride in what you do. No matter if you're a brain surgeon, you're digging ditches for a living, you take pride in what you do. And it's obvious that the guys at PGI, even though there are some notable exceptions, like on their art team, <laughs> the guys at PGI as a whole do not care about MechWarrior. They do not care about Battletech. They do not love this game. And it shows in everything they do. That's it. Okay, Mouse GMR. Um, yeah, do I see a future of this game? No, not at all. Um, you can't easily take a hobby franchise like this and drive it into the ground so much that people that have been consistent groups together for 10 plus years and have played MechWarrior 3, MechWarrior 4 and then any interim product before MechWarrior Online came out just for the sake of keeping that addiction going, um, then got so fucking disenfranchised with it they're absolutely sick to death of it by the time, well, where we are now, where we find ourselves today. Um, it's an absolute joke, to be honest. I mean, I don't know what kind of Fisher-Price fucking game development education these guys had, but uh, <laughs> to get in Duke this Nukem kind of position... Duke Forever's multiplayer! <laughs> to get in this kind of position <laughs> now... Bass Strikes Pro. Yeah. It's just a joke. It's an absolute joke. I just don't understand how you manage it. Um, it really takes effort to do this badly. And, um, you know, I, I know I know it's a complicated franchise to deal with. You know, some of the balance areas are very difficult to try and approach and and, deal, and measure and, and handle without upsetting people. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, is you've got to keep the core concepts down. You've got to keep the importance of the clan invasion. You've got to keep the importance of the house v house activity. You know, it isn't. it can't just be World of Tanks with mechs. And unfortunately, that's what it is. And that 
is what it forever will be. And as much as I pains me to say it, I'm leaving. You know, I'm leaving Mechra, I'm leaving Battletech. This is it for me. This is it for all my guys. We're fucking off to Star City, and then we're leaving it all behind. www.clansmogjaguar.com will be going for sale soon. Fuck this shit. We're out. Holy shit, really? Oh wow. my god. Iggy? Bottom just fell out of the community. Go on, Iggy. Oh, anybody else get a chance to read Omrecker's little uh, bit he put up on Reddit? Ooh. Oh, yeah, it was gold. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, I'll add it in. That's... That's You'd say it was shit. over gold. <laughs> yeah, that's Con Starcon over gold even. Yeah, it's uh it was it was unique. I mean it kinda you know, it's a little into what might actually be going on under the surface. And you know, it's like they say with an iceberg, you only see the top ten percent. So I mean yes, if the forum rage, if our podcast, if all that all this shit that's going on is the top ten percent. What's the other 90 look like? Do we even um, want to know? Exactly. Um, curiosity, but I don't think I would want to know all the dirty shit that's going on under there. Okay, Deathlike? Just take a look at the, na the, 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 the people that are trying to hire, and do you wonder if the people have already bailed ship, or they're struggling to just try to get it together before they, before they cash out and, with the clan pack and get it over with. I mean, come on, you you don't have a UI designer and you want UI 2.0 finish. You want a game designer who the hell develops this game? I don't I don't even know whose idea is what anymore. And I mean, I mean, just there it's it's sinking it's a sinking ship. That's what it is. It's it's very clear to me. This is the moment where you sort of realize you're witnessing something historic, a failure of epic proportions, quite possibly the biggest in free to play history. Indeed. Mouths. Uh, yes, I'm going to refer to topic 5, do you see a future for this game? I'm going to respond to that question in general. Um, no, I do not see a future for MechWarrior Online because I don't care what PGI has done, I don't care about all the promises they failed to deliver. I look at this game and I try to play it and it's not entertaining. The game's depressing to play, I don't have fun when I play this game. I play another game, like Hawken. That game, in my opinion, is superior because it's actually fun. I can have fun with Hawken. But MechWare Online, it's just a depressing, sad experience as a whole. And honestly, if it stays the way it is right now... It sucks no, the it fun out of you. Dudebot. Alright, the new hires kind of make me think of two things. Uh, someone brought up high res earlier, and everyone knows that once they uh, brought out Smite, TA got, or Travis in, they stopped having updates after a few months after that the beta came out. And that makes me think, the new hires make me think that something else is already in uh, their pipeline, some unknown game that's not uh, labeled yet. And uh, we always hear say dead game, but this makes me think that they know this themselves too. So this is them going out with their own bang. Uh, so I, would, I personally would guess that after maybe Nove November 2014, they're just going to have one less update and have the servers go for a year or two. Alpha. <laughs> Hi, rest time. There's a lot of things I could say. I could talk about how the EQRG got freaking slammed over the... Well, not slammed, but attritioned over the long course of this god-awful from Forsaken Beta, but I think I'll leave with a note uh, from Alex Wolf's own comic, which he posted very recently on the forums. We are free at last. We are all free at last. Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty, we're free at last! <laughs> God damn Alex. it, Valkyrie! When, when I came into this game, in closed beta, I was full of hope, and I was happy for the franchise. The first warning sign was the, the open beta launch, which the game wasn't ready for. That's when the monkey spoke theory came about. The second time, well, it looked like the game was starting to get out of the nosedive around January, February. But then we got the, the coolant flash, and we all realized, I think, that it's really happening. This game is really going down. And then the full launch, the Metacritic review, is, is pro pretty much what broke this game's back. This grab deal is just really, really loud flopping on the floor, but it's not getting back up. Guys, whoever is still playing this, 
it's your time, it's your money, but try some other games, they're fun, there's lots of fun good games in the world, just let it go. GG Piggy. Bass. I guess I'll be closing this whole thing then one day, Connor. I guess so. Yeah, Mech War Online. At some point, one point a long, long time ago, pretty much two years ago, there was something good here. You could tell that there was something good and they seemed passionate. Then something happened. I don't know what happened. Maybe they were cursed by the publisher. Maybe they're just incompetent. Doesn't really matter. Something happened, and then it became all about the money. It became all about the cash. People bought founders, and then the lies started. All the fucking lies started. And despite the lies, despite the coolant gate, third person, more hero mix, meta game balancing by fucking hero mix, all that shit, people keep grab dealing. Kept grab dealing and they kept telling PGI it was okay, it's fine. You can you can milk us for money. You can milk us so fucking hard. And then the unthinkable happened. Added third person. People grab dealed even more Phoenix after that. And here we are now. We're at the clan grab deal. There is no future for the game now. Basically what's gonna happen is in June when this shit releases the clans are gonna walk all over the inner sphere. You're gonna be playing with a buggy, shitty UI, like in close beta. It's gonna lose your armor, lose your ammo. It's gonna fuck over everything. It's gonna be great. You won't have cues to hide in anymore. Everybody will have third person, because, well, they're merging all the shit, right? And it's gonna be the same old ghetto stomp. And the people who bought the clan mechs. They're gonna farm the fuck out of all the free players and all the remaining people who kept true to everything and just wanted to play fucking robots. They will leave. And eventually it's only gonna be the clans left. Just the fucking clans. The ultimate uber goal, the mega Kerenskis. All that's gonna be left. The last shot in this game, I predict, is gonna be between someone like Roadbear shooting Hefe and then... Then, then they will just quit out and they will clutch those down the servers. But once we remember this, we asked for this. I mean, everybody who's in here pretty much bought founders. You, you enabled this. Everybody fucking enabled this. You kept feeding money into this shit. So you are as guilty as everybody else. But, I mean, you can, you can, say, you can say, I didn't know better at the time, right? might be valid for founders anyway, you didn't know what was going on. But the people who grab clans now, people are so fucking addicted to this, they just gotta have their mad cats. Just gotta have the fucking mad cat. You're as guilty of ruining Mech Warrior and running this fucking franchise into the ground as PGI and IGP. And I do not want to be associated with you, ever. And if I see you in Star Citizen, if I see you in the game during my last fucking days, and I know you're one of those people, you gonna get fucking team killed. I will make your life so miserable for ruining one of my favorite franchises. And that's all I have to say. To paraphrase, uh, I think it was Silent Hill. There was a game here once. It's gone now. was the night before Alpha, when all through the bay, not a gold was posting, not even Hefe. The hangers were updated by the client with care, in hopes that Chris Roberts soon would be there. The Konglets were nestled all snug in their bunks, with visions of Brian locked in their trunks, and Vass in his speedo and I in my cap, had just settled our quarters for a long winter's nap. When out on the deck there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the alpine snow gave a luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eyes did appear but a high poly bengal and deployed landing gear. With a little old pilot so lively and alert, I knew in a moment he must be Robert. More rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted the packages by name. 
now Aurora, now Avenger, now Hornet and Gladiator, on Connie, on Idris, on Merlin and Freelancer, to the top of the backers, to the end of their call. Now fly away, fly away, fly away all. As Jenners that before the wild street cat fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the dropships the coursers they flew, with the carrier full of modules, and Chris Roberts too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the deck the pulsing and thrusting of all of their tech. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the airlock Chris Robert came with a bound. He was dressed in a flight suit from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bearing AR he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the teeth in a smile was as white as the snow. The stump of cigar he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a washboard belly that flexed when he laughed and made me all jelly. He was thick and firm, a right jolly fit guy, and I screamed when I saw him I thought I would die. A wink of his eye and a nod of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and started the uploads then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the airlock he rose. He sprang to his ship, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the launch of a missile. But I heard him exclaim as he flew out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.